My name is Hamid Alvi. Uh, I'm a Kenyan. Uh, I was not born in Kenya, but I was, I'm a Kenyan citizen. And the better part of my life, I have lived and worked in Kenya. It's one of the best countries in the world that I've been to, so I really love Kenya. So my father moved to Kenya in 1972, and he came in as a charity worker, as a community worker. And to date he's alive, and uh, that's something that has really inspired us to continue his work as well as not. As much as we are into business, we are also into a lot of charity work as well. Uh, business has been on my mind since I was a child. I was always into business, looking at how businessmen talk, how they operate. And if I, if I was to visit a shop, I would see what they're doing. I mean, just not go by and come back. So my elder brother started our family business when I was in Standard 7. And every Saturday and every holiday, I was at the shop. So I started learning from a very early age and I was interested in it. There was no looking back and I, I knew I had to be in business and I had to be successful. We have other business uh, running at the moment. And in between, we had two other businesses that we started and unfortunately, we had to close them down because of various reasons. Uh, so this is our fourth business that we're running. So Dafina bread making. This goes back a long time ago. The first time the bread business uh, came into our mind was in 2010, where we discussed with one of our friends who's a supplier of machinery for the bread. Uh, so he, we discussed with him into the opportunity of the business. At that time, we were too young into the business. We didn't have enough capital, so we dropped off the idea. Since when, we concentrated a lot on the other business. But back in 2018, 2019, we seriously wanted to look into another business which was cash-based. So basically bread is sold on cash. Our other business is credit-based business. So when we started looking into the options of a cash-based business, so we came across uh, the food industry, which is mainly cash business. From there on, we consulted many of our friends and our mentors, and they advised us that the bread business is a good business, it's a thriving business. So back in 2019, early 2020, we decided to venture into it. So the first step that we took in while uh, starting the bakery business was to consult with our mentors and they are into the food business. So they guided us step by step on how we should go about it. So there was a lot of uh, feasibility studies being done. So once the feasibility study was done, we had to now plan for ourselves, our capital, look for the right people. We also hired a consultant who took us through each and every step of setting up and starting and selling a, uh, the bread business. So once we did that, we went into market research. So market research specifically, we went to different areas to find out what type of bread do people like in that area. Some people like white bread or brown bread, somebody, some areas they want the longer bread, which is 400 grams, but it is slightly longer. Some people wanted the standard square, square, loaf, square, square slice breads. So after doing that research, then we went into now the actual groundwork of uh, setting up the warehouse, uh, getting the machineries, getting the machinery set up, and then doing the testing. And here we are. So we had a very vague idea of how to make bread. Bread is something simple, so what everybody knows is you need flour, you need water, you need a bit of salt, and you mix them and you have bread. But it's much more complicated than that. So, our consultant really took us through step by step and when we got into the business that's when we realized uh, the challenges that are there the whole process and i would say now we have mastered the process of uh, bread making it's one year and about two months since we started so production side we are comfortable with that we are okay with that now we are looking forward to venture into more products like uh, burger buns or hot dog buns so first things first, I mean, uh, you must have seen around that we give a high importance on cleanliness and safety. Safety for our workers and cleanliness. Our motto is that we must give quality bread, organic bread to our customers. That is our motto and that's what we believe in. This is something that we should take home and, and be able to eat. Other, other people probably don't do that, but for us, we feel pride in that. <clears throat> so the first thing is cleanliness. So our storage has to be uh, top-notch. 
So the flour, first of all, is mixed with water in a big mixer. Uh, we have our other ingredients, sugar and oil, which are mixed separately, pre-mixed. Uh, so once the mixture is done, uh, then, the, then the dough is left to, for cutting. And after it is cutting, it is placed into tins. From there, it goes into a prover room. Now, in the prover room, the bread raises, so it's like a ferment. It's a, it's a process for uh, to make better bread. So, and to make the process a bit faster. If you leave it without the prover room, it will take much longer, much much longer. So, it's just a, a process to make it slightly faster. From there, it goes into the ovens. From the ovens, we have to remove them, depan them. After depanning, they need to cool down. Now, that's the very critical process as well. For at first, I did not know myself that the bread would take so much time to cool down. If it does not cool down correctly, it cools down too fast or too slowly, you have a problem. After that, we, it goes in for slicing, packing, then it goes into the crates and finally ready for delivery. So that takes roughly about seven hours. So Capital, uh, when we started off venturing into this business, we had no idea on the capital required for it. And to us, we just factored in the major uh, items, like for example, the oven, the mixers, probably one or two vehicles. But there's a lot more to it. If you have gone around and seen, there's a lot of small, small items. So when we started, we did not have a big budget for it. But as we went along and we saw the requirements, so we obviously had to pull out some of it from our other running business. We had a few savings here and there. So it took us much longer than expected. But we are not uh, complaining about that. I believe if we go the right way, even if it's slow, we will succeed. So our foundation had to be good. So over, over the one year since we started this project, uh, we started uh, the groundwork in July 2020. So from July 2020 to basically last year, December, we have been slowly, slowly investing into the company. So it was not, we, didn't, we don't borrow. As Muslims, we don't believe in interest. So we don't go to the bank. We, we are all self-funded. But it took time, but it's okay. We are okay with that. Bread, as, it's, as, a, as a product, it's not a very risky product because bread is something everybody eats every day. So it's a very fa uh, fast-moving consumer product. Uh, the whole business itself is a risk. Anything, <laughs> an entrepreneur, they, he, he, he takes risks. And somebody who does not take risks is not an entrepreneur. So the whole concept from the start to, to, till today, there's risk involved anyway. But the thing is, how do you manage your risks? You take it positively, you take it as a challenge, you have a problem, you look for a solution, and then you take it up from there. So I think so. it has been very interesting, it has been very uh, adventurous as well, and we are looking to go a long way. This is still the beginning, one year, one, one year and two months, we are looking into a lifetime. Our success story, um, it's still too early, but I think so we are very happy with what we have achieved. Our target is much, much bigger and much longer than that. But so far, what we are happy with is that our foundation is good, our bread quality is good, our repeat customers come back because of our quality. So we are very happy to hear that feedback from our customers. Uh, so our foundation has been good and we've taken it slowly. We are happy where we are. So penetrating through the market is a difficult part, especially for a new brand. Uh, it's, there's always resistance to it, there's not acceptance to it. We took it slowly and we took it steadily and we have got the results. The bread uh, has got the market, people are liking it. And as I mentioned earlier, the quality aspect, people are coming back for it. That's our proudest moment. So penetrating into the market, we use the social media, which is the strongest tool today. And we have our ambassador, Sabri, who, and we're doing daily posts about it. We have advertisements through giving out promotional items to some of our vendors and customers. Uh, we have not gone on to the mainstream media yet because we are not covering the major parts of Nairobi yet. And once we do that, our advertisement will increase and then it will be uh, more easier to penetrate the market.
every day is a learning process and my idea is to learn everything new, have a mindset of learning. So I would learn from everybody I meet. Uh, and whatever we have learned already in our other businesses, we did apply it in this business. But in the, in the bread business, we have learned some things that now we, we are applying in our other businesses as well. So I really wouldn't regret doing anything one year ago because every day is a new process, experience. Uh, but definitely, if with the experience we have today and if we were to start another business, yes, we would do things uh, differently. So our culture is more like a family-like uh, culture. We like to work hand in hand and very openly with all the staff, whether senior staff, production staff. We like to interact with them. We like to take their opinions on matters. You will be surprised some of the opinions some people give are so amazing and you'll be like, how comes I didn't think of that? So that's, that's what it creates. It creates trust, it creates uh, openness and uh, that's how we also run our other business. For our bread for Dafina, non-negotiable is quality. I'll repeat that because that's something we really, really concentrate much on. Our brand name is good, our colors that we chose for the branding were good, more youth-oriented if you have seen that, more Kenyan, so that's what we want. So what's setting Dafina unique uh, are our brand colors, our brand name, and the names of all the different varieties of breads that we have, 200 grams is called Donye. Uh, then we have Bingwa and uh, Bonge, so those are all names that are uh, quite unique. And then we have Bazu, which is the bigger bread, so the names rhyme with the size of the breads. Uh, so our typical day at Dafina, it really depends on what time you will go and buy a bread. You need the bread at breakfast at probably 5 a.m., 6 a.m., 7 a.m., depending on. So if you don't find fresh bread at your nearest kiosk at that time, you will not like it. So we have to have our guys right early in the morning, distributing and going all around so that the kiosk has fresh bread. So we have different teams. We have the night shift, we have the day shifts. So the production, we have a night shift production staff who are here throughout the night with the supervisor. Uh, we come in early in the morning and make sure everything is uh, organized well, everything has been loaded correctly. Once that is done, then we go on to our office work, which is now working on our payments to suppliers and collecting of money and accounts and administration. So I spend a big time of my time after the deliveries are done. So our, our main responsibility or the main factor is on delivering bread. Once that is done, then we have enough time to do our administration job. Then later in the evening, we sit down with all the salesmen to do the accounts. And during the day, we go around the warehouse, the production area several times to make sure everything is running well. If everybody, anybody has a problem, we try to solve it out immediately. For myself, I come in, I have no fixed time. I, and I like it to keep it that way. So I might come in at 7 in the morning, 8 in the morning, 9 in the morning, 10 in the morning and I may go away, come back again and sometimes I will also visit later at night to make sure everything is okay. If any problems are there, so we can solve them immediately. So a strategy of hiring employees has been uh, to hire employees who have some experience because we do not have experience ourselves so it would not be possible for us to teach somebody. But we are very quick learners and uh, whoever came in, came with a bit of experience. But there were several employees who came in as either a watchman or either uh, somebody as a laborer and we promoted them and took them onto the production area as well and they learned. So there are many employees that we have promoted and they were quick learners. Uh, so that was an advantage to us whereby we brought somebody right from the bottom and uh, they are doing very well for us now. Our production capacity is about 20,000 loaves of bread a day. That is uh, working 24 hours. So it really depends on the demand. And very funnily since we started this business and we've realized that there's seasons for bread whereby you will have some months are very high in demand, especially in December. Everybody's going for holidays and uh, they're going to meet their families, people getting together, having more meals. January, as you know, is, is not a very good month. Especially since the COVID time has started, uh, we could feel a very big difference on uh, the demand. So it all depends on the demand and we produce according to that. Because it's a perishable item, we cannot stock it for too many days. So we go by the demand. 
we also were shocked about it uh, because I would I've, I have bread every day. So why would I have more bread on, in one month and, and less in the other month? So obviously it's, it depends on the masses. For bread is a delicacy for some people. It's not a necessity for some. So when they have more money to spare, they will buy bread. And when it's a festive season, they will buy. So in between, if we have Easter coming by, or we might have Eid coming around or any other holiday, so the bread demand goes higher on those days. And throughout the year, it is more or less stable, not too much of a difference. But the major differences we found was December, December and January. Okay, brand uh, name. We, we asked some of our close friends and family to give us suggestions. And uh, we got some very nice suggestions. So, and we asked the youth. So we wanted a name that is more like, you know, resonating with the youth. So Dafina came about with that and my, the colors and all, my brother chose all that because he's a graphic designer. He came up with the brand uh, colors and everything. So he, he did the designing together with the outsourcing as well. But he, the idea was his, my elder brother. Now getting into the market and we are competing with the companies who have been in the business for 30 to 40 years is not a small deal. Uh, the pricing factor is dictated by the market. We cannot have our own pricing unless we are doing a very special product like let's say rye bread or uh, multi-grain bread. Those, that has a niche market. But talking about the standard bread is the market that dictates the price. So we have to work on our costing and make sure that our costing is good. Which is good, we have no doubt about it. And we're using all organic materials. Uh, that's where our quality comes well, whereby uh, we do not want to use artificial sweeteners or any chemicals. All ingredients for the bread are, are available locally. And there are several companies that are dealing with this. So it's not a big deal. And you will have so many suppliers, you have so many options. But we need to select the best. If it's sugar, we have to make sure we're buying the best sugar. If it's yeast, we have to make sure we're buying the best yeast. Although it is expensive, but we need to maintain our quality. So feeling of doubt as an entrepreneur, you always face challenges. So when you face some big challenges, you would always be a bit uh, scared or you'll have a fear in yourself. That's natural, but it's how you channelize that fear is what makes a difference between a successful person and an unsuccessful person. So we've had challenges and uh, our focus is on our goal. What is our goal or what is our cause? Our cause is to provide quality bread. So once we have that in goal in our mind, that cause in our mind, no problem is big enough to be challenged. So we have our focus on our goal and every day we take it one step at a time, we're not in a hurry. So with that in mind, our foundation is strong, we can tackle any problem at any time. My most strongest mantra, I live by a few, but the strongest one is a quote by our Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And he quotes that a good believer is he whose today is better than his yesterday. So what does this mean? This means continuous, never-ending improvement. So every day you're learning something new, and that's, that's, that has really helped me. If anybody is interested in the bread business, uh, my advice to them would be to do a very good feasibility study in the area, wherever they want to start. There is enough demand for bread, there is there enough people in Kenya, there is there's too much demand to meet. But you need to do a very good feasibility study, do not start just by um, facts and figures just told verbally by somebody you know you need to do your own feasibility and once you have that gut feeling that yes I'm ready and I can do it you venture into it what I would like to share with everyone is that nothing is impossible when we started this business definitely I did have some doubts how is going how will we do the business how will it go on how will we raise the capital but believe me once we decided on it everything started coming in together but the biggest thing is you should have patience. Patience is the key. It took us one and a half to two years to where we are today. And some people would say, two years, that's a long time in my life. No, how about the five years, 10 years that you've wasted just thinking of doing something? So once we ventured in and uh, we saw everything falling right in its place, we had challenges, but we overcame them. We learned, we consulted, 
Uh, one thing entrepreneurs, especially the new beginners, they do not do much is consult. And who should you consult with? You should consult with the person who has done something, not just somebody who's teaching it out of a textbook. If I need to know about bread business, I went to the person who's done it before and we hired him as a consultant. So I would really recommend doing extensive feasibility studies. So now everybody is inclined to something uh, naturally. You might have a passion for something, you might have a natural inclination to something. Something that pulls you, something that you don't get bored of. So food is obviously an integral part of our life and uh, in our family, in our history or wherever we come from, traditionally we are farmers. So my father was a wheat farmer and farming is something that really is in our blood. So food, we are, we are from an area in Pakistan that is called Punjab and that's the food basket of uh, Pakistan, just the same as we have the Western uh, in Kenya. So I think so that was really in our blood, we all enjoyed it and it was resonating very well with us. It was not something out of the way, let's say today if somebody tells me that uh, do something in the aircraft industry, I, I don't know nothing and I'm not interested in that. I would rather do something that I'm interested in. So I think it's very important for yourself to find out your passion. And if your passion and profession become one, you will enjoy and you will make it very good. You'll be successful. As a social responsibility, Dafina is working with a lot of organizations towards educating the unfortunate and also in conservation. In conservation of uh, the forests, the beautiful forests of Kenya the beautiful animals so we're working hand in hand with KWS as well whereby we sponsor some schools to take their children to KWS to the Nairobi National Park and see the beautiful animals we have and at the same time we are educating a lot of people we also have a lot of charity programs whereby we supply bread free of charge to medical camps we have done to start up a bakery, uh, which is a commercial bakery, it all depends on what is your target market, what are the sources of your capital, and uh, how big you want to go. So if you want to start up in a local area, you don't have much capital, you have a lot of options onto machinery. You could get a small oven, a small mixer, or you could do it up for a second hand one. There are enough available in the market. So a, a used one, a Turkish brand, probably a big oven which can accommodate 240 breads should cost about 800,000. If you want something less than that, the, the Chinese brands are uh, available. Nothing is impossible. I mean, the options are a lot. Once you start looking into them, even if you have a small budget, you could start a bakery. There's no certain figure that you need to establish to start a business. You could start off from home. And we have had such success stories, people who have started from home, selling from home, and now they are into one of the biggest uh, businesses in Kenya. So money should never be a constraint. It's the will that you have. And if you have set your eyes on something and you're determined to get it, you